Hey folks, Dave here with another quick model making tip from Thunder Mesa Studio. And today I want to talk to you about something we couldn't do much modeling without. Glue. Just about every experienced model maker will have favorite glues that they will prefer for different materials and applications. And here we're looking at some of my favorites that I use on a regular basis. Let's talk about each one and what they are best used for. Well, let's start off with the glue that just about everyone is most familiar with. Uh, good old white glue or Elmer's glue, sometimes called school glue or glue all. Uh, Elmer's is a, is a PVA glue. Uh, PVA stands for polyvinyl acetate. And what it does is it, um, it seeps into porous materials. So when you put two porous materials together, with some PVA in between, it seeps into uh, the, the porous spaces in those materials and then dries and creates a bond. So it's really good for gluing things like uh, paper, uh, cardboard, some woods, uh, cloth, things like that. My favorite use for uh, just plain white glue is as a bonding agent for ballast uh, and scenery on the layout. And I uh, dilute it three to one with water and usually spray it out of a spray bottle, but sometimes I'll just dribble it on too. And that's my favorite use for uh, good old white glue. The next one is another PVA glue. Uh, this one is Eileen's Tacky Glue. And this is the one I prefer for a lot of model building, uh, especially for putting in uh, details uh, into structures and figures and things like that in the layout. It's, uh, it's thicker and just like advertised, tackier or stickier than uh, regular Elmer's PVA glue. And so it creates a, a, a faster bond when putting something down. You can, you can glue things to the side of things without them falling off onto the ground because of the tackiness of this glue. And that's why I prefer it for uh, uh, putting details into models. Great stuff. Now, most of the structures I build are made mostly of wood. So I prefer a wood glue to put them together. This is a tight bond wood glue. Uh, others work as well. Uh, I prefer a water soluble wood glue and uh, that uh, usually will say interior use on it. And what that means is if you glue two pieces together and want to unglue them, you can add a little bit of water and pull them apart and, and fix it if, if you did it wrong the first time. Uh, a handy thing to be able to do uh, when building structures. So I really like the tight bond wood glue interior use. And uh, yes, it is another PVA glue. Now when using PVA glues like uh, wood glue, I, I never apply it to the model using the spout. And that's because uh, the spouts on these are usually not very precise. So I always like to squeeze a little bit out onto a onto a dish or plate or something like that. And my preferred way to apply glue is with a cheap paintbrush. Just take a little like this, put it on here, and then squeeze the pieces together. One thing about PVA glue, it benefits greatly uh, from clamping. You want to clamp the pieces tightly together so that that glue will squeeze into those porous surfaces and create a strong bond. Some people prefer a toothpick to apply glue with, a flat toothpick or a round toothpick. I've used both kinds, and um, that is a handy way to apply very small controlled dabs of glue, just like that, or something, say, like this. Now, this might seem a little wasteful to have big blobs of glue in a plate like this, and truthfully, yeah, a lot of it does dry out and end up being thrown away, but fortunately, uh, PVA glue is inexpensive, and it's far better to have too much on your plate than too much on your model. Now, I've given this a chance to dry completely, and just let me show you what I mean about being able to uh, fix a misaligned joint or something like that. I'm just going to put some water here around these two joints, give it uh, just a minute or so to soak in, and then I think I can probably just, yep, wiggle that apart like that. 
The next uh, glue in our tool kit is some uh, Plastruck Bondine, which is a styrene and ABS solvent. And what this stuff actually does is it melts the, uh, the plastic. It melts the styrene and enables you to create a weld joint. And a weld joint is an incredibly strong way to uh, put two pieces together because what it does is it, it basically turns two pieces into one piece. Rather than using an adhesive to flatly join them together, it bonds them together in a weld like that. So let me just demonstrate here with these two pieces of uh, styrene. Unlike other glues, you usually do not apply this uh, solvent-based uh, cement first. You put the two, you fit the two pieces together, make sure they fit perfectly, and then use capillary motion. See if I can hold this together uh, to draw the glue in. It's very thin. It's almost like uh, alcohol; it evaporates very quickly. So that's going to draw into that joint. And after a few seconds, uh, we're going to have a really tight weld bond. Uh, I could do an entire video on modeling with styrene. Uh, I don't do enough modeling with styrene really to talk uh, too much about it. But uh, I'll tell you, one of the number one mistakes people make with styrene is uh, they try to use the wrong glue to put it together. They'll use like a cyanoacrylate or something like that. And it just doesn't work as well. It makes a surface bond instead of a weld bond and it doesn't hold together quite as well. The other mistake they make is they use too much. They use too much of the bonding and uh, frankly melts away too much of the plastic and you get a big globby mess. So you can see that makes a nice clean strong joint which is why this is a material uh, greatly prized for uh, engineering and architectural models and things like that. This stuff is good old testers model glue. This is some thin stuff. You can get it uh, in a thick gel in a tube too. This is something a lot of us are familiar with who grew up in the, the 60s and 70s, the good old model glue. This is the stuff you're not supposed to sniff, <laughs> so don't do it. Uh, even if you're curious, kids, don't try it. Trust me on this. Don't do it. Uh, but uh, yeah, this works similar to the Bondine. Um, it's not quite as strong of a joint as you get on Plastruck or, or ABS. Uh, but And this one you apply to uh, both surfaces of the plastic, put them together, and clamp it until the glue evaporates. So that's how you work with this stuff. Not my favorite glue, by the way, and i be honest, I do not use it often. But then I don't do a lot of plastic models either. Now, if you're uh, familiar with this channel and have seen some of my other videos, you've probably seen me use this stuff from time to time. This is 3M Super 77 Spray Adhesive. Now, this stuff is permanent, so if you're going to stick stuff together with this, make sure you want it to stay stuck together. Uh, it uh, works uh, better on porous materials, but will also work on some non-porous materials. Uh, you spray it on, it dries quick and clear, just like it says on there, and permanently. Um, I use it mostly for graphics, like I'll create a sign and spray some on the back, you know, print it out uh, on, on a home printer or on a, a laser copier at the copy, copy center and uh, spray some of this on the back and apply it to some illustration board or uh, Bristol board and cut it out and you've got a really nice sign for your structure. Now we've showed how to glue some styrene to some styrene and some wood to some wood, but what if for some reason you wanted to glue some wood to some styrene? What would you use? Well, there are a couple of things, and probably the best one, the one that I like to use a lot, is cyanoacrylate. Um, I prefer either a thick or medium viscosity. Thick is better for working with porous materials like wood. Uh, medium is a good all-purpose. Uh, the thin stuff, if you get it uh, used at your own risk, it tends to run, and you will be gluing your fingers together far more often than you're gluing anything else together. So let's just uh, try a little experiment here and see if I can glue this wooden piece onto this styrene piece with a little bit of this thick CA. Put a little bit on here and this in. I like to use these uh, applicators. Makes it easy to apply precise amounts of the glue where you want it. Don't put on too much. You put on too much and it takes longer to cure actually. Small dots of cyanoacrylate will cure more quickly because it needs air. It needs air in there to, uh, to cure. So if you put a whole bunch on there, you basically smother it. 
Now, if you want your uh, cyanoacrylate to cure quickly, uh, especially if you're working with small, delicate parts, you often want that. I'll use an accelerator like this from Starbond, Starbond Accelerator, which does have acetone in it, so don't huff this either, kids. Just uh, you spray a little bit on there from about, usually about six inches away, and uh, that will accelerate the setting of the cyanoacrylate, and you'll have a nice, strong joint. So there we've got uh, two very different materials glued together with cyanoacrylate. It's uh, not the world's strongest joint. If I wanted to break it, I could easily, but usually it's uh, good enough for model making purposes. Um, again, with cyanoacrylate, one of the biggest mistakes people make is they put too much on. A little goes a long way. And while I've got this out there, let me show you one more trick I really like. Say I want to glue something really small and delicate to this weird assembly, whatever it is we're building here. Um, put a little bit of this thick CA on, on this piece of wood. Place this straight pin on here. Now, if you've ever tried to do something like this, you know that this is a very weak joint and it's uh, probably not going to stick. But I'm going to take some baking soda. Baking soda can also be used as an accelerant or kicker for cyanoacrylate. And I'm going to just dribble some on the top like that. And what's that, what that's going to do is the baking soda is going to soak up the excess CA and create a strong, uh, almost clamp around this piece. Let that go. Blow off the excess. And you have a much stronger joint than you would have ordinarily. Now, of course, you're going to have some baking soda residue on there. So, you know, uh, this is a technique you're going to want to use in places where it's not going to show or where you can disguise that baking soda as something else. I've, I've made it look like rust or soot or, you know, any number of things, dirt, depending on what the model is. Just another nice little technique to add to your toolkit. A couple more words uh, uh, about cyanoacrylate or CA. Uh, you notice I don't have the little tubes, you know, the, the crazy glue that you find um, at your local hardware store or drugstore. Um, as far as I know, it's all the same glue, pretty much. It's, it's very, the formulas are all very similar. I prefer it in a bottle with an applicator than to those little tubes. Those little tubes always uh, clog and dry out, and, and I end up throwing most of the glue away. Uh, th these dry out also. Uh, these applicators you can get, uh, you know, you buy a bag of 100 of a hundred of them, they're going to last you quite a long time. Um, there's these little plastic tube applicators for bottles like this. And what happens is um, the glue is going to dry out right up at the end. And you can see it makes a little, almost a little ball on the end there when it dries out. And what that does is it, it actually self seals the glue inside. And then when you're ready to use this again, you can just take your hobby knife and cut that off and you'll have a relatively fresh bottle of glue. It, it does dry out over time and you can extend the life of cyanoacrylate by actually keeping it in the refrigerator. If you happen to have one of those handy and your significant other doesn't mind having glue in the refrigerator, that's a good thing to do. The last glue I wanna talk about today is uh, some five minute epoxy actually comes in different formulations to dry faster or slower, depending on what your needs are. I like a five minute epoxy. And this is, I call this the glue of last resort. <laughs> this is the stuff I use when nothing else will work. And uh, you know, you, it, it, there's two separate tubes, you mix it together, there's the glue, and then there's a hardener in there. And uh, this is a 50-50 mix, and it does it automatically when you push the plunger down. I'm not going to demonstrate it right now because I think just about everyone is pretty much familiar with epoxy. Um, it stinks. Um, another thing, you don't want to spend a lot of time breathing. Uh, but it's really handy for uh, repairs and uh, holding things up where nothing else will do. Uh, say if I wanted to take this and have it glued somewhere down on the layout. I don't know why, but... <laughs> It's kind of a goofy looking thing, but if I wanted to do that and I wanted it to stay there, I would make a little bead of this five minute epoxy and hold it in place. 
until that epoxy is set up. And then, believe me, it wouldn't be going anywhere. So the glue of last resort, in my opinion, five minute epoxy. It has its applications, but to be honest, I don't use it very often. In fact, I've had this grand, brand new package sitting here for about a year now. Now, before we go, I wanna talk a little bit about one other type of adhesive, uh, and that's tape. Um, tape is not great for model building, model making, in my opinion, because it's, uh, it's, it's a weak bond, and most tapes are acidic which means they're gonna eat into and yellow whatever material you're, uh, you're trying to fix together over time. Um, if you want something to last, and I like to think I build my models to last, some of them have been on the layout here for 10 years or more, some are more older than that, came from previous layouts. Uh, I don't like to use tape. Um, in particular, I've heard people talk about using uh, double-sided tape for applying shingles with. Now on the surface, this seems like a nice little solution. And I'm, you know, and if you've had success doing that, more power to you. Um, my problem with it is this tape is gonna dry out and crumble into dust, depending on the climate you live in, uh, in short order. Uh, so if you're building models to last, I really don't recommend doing that. Another one I would never put on a model uh, to use permanently, We'll never say never. Uh, I actually have used masking tape uh, to uh, model uh, leather and steel bands and stuff like that, but it's not, it, it becomes a modeling material that is glued on with something else rather than using the weak and acidic ad adhesive that comes with the tape itself. So that's my two cents on using tape. Uh, avoid it if you can as a bonding material for models. Uh, because it's just it's just not very permanent. It's great to use while building a model to hold things together, to hold things together in place temporarily, even to clamp things together. You use a, 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 a low-tack uh, painter's tape like this. Great for that stuff, but uh, I wouldn't expect it to hold anything together for a long period of time. And that, my friends, is probably everything you ever wanted to know about glue, but we're afraid to ask. If you enjoy seeing things like this, you can uh, subscribe to this channel right here on YouTube. And if you'd like to help get Thunder Mesa's videos on the air, you can become a member of the channel right here down below, or you can go over to patreon.com like these folks did and become a patron of this station. That's uh, patreon.com slash Thunder Mesa. Until next time, keep moving forward, amigos, and adios for now.